Hi, and welcome to a quick demo of NetPro's plant metrics for petrol stations. Now, from the dashboard or the landing page, rather, you just click on Start Free 30 Day Trial. This will bring you to the page where you sign up by entering a few information. So, I'm going to throw in uh, oh, that's not a good one. Let's see. Um, Uh, plant link, uh, sorry, plant link station. Okay. All right, I'll say plant link oil and gas. Sounds more like oil and gas. Yeah, sounds more like a petrol station name to me. We have the name of the manager as that, Okoro. Okay. And his phone number is. Zero eight zero one two three four five six seven eight. The email address is me. Okay, that that suffice. And his password is that. And have it typed. And the station address is uh, three Lemon Road, um, Greenville. Uh, yeah, something like that. And then you sign in. All right, this message is going to be alerting you every day to tell you that you need to enter your your tank dipping readings because that's the first thing you do uh, in, in the plants. Your prescription, the first day, first thing you do every morning is to enter your your dipping readings. So this is just a reminder to capture that into the software. We're going to get to that, but we're going to first start with going through everything on the menu. So first thing you do is start this tank information. So let's see, this is a uh, river state. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 you kind of reloaded. All right, let's put uh, emo state. Okay, emo. All right, the, the catch just called up some other things I didn't need to see. All right, let's move on. We have, uh, Opening balance. This this is useful if you want your balance sheet to do an accurate calculation of uh, of the balance sheet. Then opening balance before you start using the software would be necessary. Otherwise, you can leave it uh, at zero. So your current uh, price for uh, per liter for DPK. Okay, so I'm going to go with uh, the arbitrary number, say 200. I think. Yeah, I can say 200. Okay. And then cost per liter is 190. AGO cost is 260. Uh, and AGO, okay, that's price. Whereas unit cost is 250, for instance. And then the PMS, uh, say unit current price is 190. And cost per liter is one seventy eight. Like All right. Save changes on the dashboard. The software calculates all, all of those uh, profit per liter. Uh, they're not a big deal for now. Until we start uh, doing product supply, which we'll get to in a minute. All right. Then you enter your sales attendance. So I'm going to throw in a few names here. Henry. Yeah, I saw that Helen. Yeah, I'll do Helen too. I saw Helen. Yeah. I'm going to have just have two people for now. Uh, the entire storage tanks. So I'm going to enter tank one, and say the liter is twenty thousand, and it's uh, for AGO. 20,000 liters and tank 2 would be for EPK and it's also 20,000 liters. We have a tank 3, uh, this time PMS, same volume, and tank 4 with the same volume, also PMS, because you usually have more PMS than the others. 
they have registered the pump. So pump one is linked to tank one, uh, EGO, tank two, pump two will be linked to tank two, which is uh, DPK, tank three, uh, we link that to tank th three, which is uh, PMS. We have tank four, pump four, the same tank. So we have two ta two tanks, uh, two pumps to this tank. It's a PMS tank. Um, tank five linked to the fourth tank, and uh, we have a, a sixth pump linked to the same one. Feel free to throw in a seven tank if you like. Uh, tank seven, like still linked to the fourth tank, or maybe linked to the third one. Okay. Okay. All right. Then we now have product supply agents. So you just enter the name of the supply agent. As you can see, I've done this before. So the, the catch is just trying to remind me of what I used and some other dummy test I was running at the time. All right, so expend your accounts. So salary is one of such accounts. Uh, um, uh, uh, started three payments. It sometimes comes up. We have office expenses. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't type that in correctly. So let's, let's clear that and repeat that again. Office expenses, office. If it is. And you can try in any one more, say uh, logistics. Okay, all right. Now that's all for settings. You never have to go back there again unless you need to make changes to any of those records. Daily records, daily record entries are things you do every day. One of such things is taking your tank deep in readings. So in the morning, you should enter all the volumes. So let's assume that in the morning, this tank was uh, 10,000 liters. Let's say they are all 10,000 liters in the morning for some reason. One, two, three. Tank three, one, two, three, and tank four. One, two, three. So we all have 10,000 liters in there. Okay. So you see, if you go back to the dashboard, it's not going to prompt you to enter tank readings anymore. It's in now. So you should go ahead to do um, product supply. Okay. This is if there's a product supply. So let's say there was one product supply and the truck came in to supply PMS. Because it can be any of the other two. But say it's PMS. Supply date is today. Okay. Yeah, today. Now, bulk volume in liters. Um, okay. What volume in liters? Uh, let's say now we have two tanks. Okay, let's say the person is supplying twenty thousand liters. One, two, three. We have two tanks. They each have ten thousand liters each, and the capacity is twenty thousand each. So we are buying an extra twenty thousand ten for each tank. So um, cost of supply. Uh, let's say four million. One, two, three. So as you can see, as you're entering these values, it's calculating a cost per liter. So that, that number might not be okay. Let's try 3 million. Okay, let's try 3.5 million. Yeah, that looks good. And then your cost of supply, um, 150,000, one, two, three. Let's say that's what you, you paid for the supply. So you now have a new cost of cost per, per liter recalculated for you and then you select the supply agent so it's every enterprise so what was the initial tank volume before and after the supply remember the tank volume was ten thousand one two three in the morning 
I want to take a opening deep in reading. Then after the, the tank was filled up, it's supposed to be 20,000, okay? One, two, three. If it's done correctly, that's if there's no shortage. The same thing here, it was 10,000 initially, one, two, three. And if at the end of the filling, we checked again, it's not 10,000, it is, say, 19,800. There's a little shot there. I'm just throwing that in so that we can have some something to talk about in the report. But typically, I'm sure that when you are handling this, you make sure your your volumes are correct before the, the tank leaves. I'm sure you have a way of settling that. Okay, so that's supply. So this is what happens every day besides that. Well, besides the dippings and the, the truck supply, which doesn't happen often, what happens every day is the sales. So on the sales part, you select your sales agent. And yeah, you're not going to be capturing sales that happens by each each uh, car that drives in the sales no you're not going to do that that would be too much work for anybody to do what you're doing is that you are capturing uh the shift each sales attendant shift so once you've selected the sales attendant you select the pump that sales attendant is working on let's say it's one of the pms pumps so pump three okay and then what was the uh opening meter reading on that pump so at the side or at the back of the pump is the volume totalizer that that calculates the, the flow through the orifice and it will just give you a number let's say that's the number that was there before the, this sales attendant started working on this pump so you enter that number and you start the shift then you get your second attendant handling a different pump that's helen Helen is on pump uh, pump four, okay, of the same tank. Okay, and uh, now we have uh, say so one, two, three, four was the initial value, and you click start shift. So that's it. Very simple. You select you tell the attendant, you and select the pump, you enter the value of the totalizer, and you click start shift. So you can do this with your phone very quickly. I walk away start everybody's shift when they are closing the shift at the end of the day let's just say we are back at the dashboard and now shift is over it's one of those tails that needs to leave for the next person to enter or to resume so you just come back, go back to the sales and you see all the current shifts that are going on you select any of them so you see Henry's own shift okay and you see the opening uh, meter reading and you check the volume totalizer there to see the closing reading so current closing reading is say two five double zero you notice as i'm entering the values here it is calculating how much this part the uh, sales attendant is supposed to give to me that's cash return from this uh is uh twenty nine thousand four hundred and fifty naira all right that's how much henry is supposed to give to me so Henry gives me that money with that from the POS, combination of POS and, and so on. So then you click on this to end the shift. That's it. Now for Helen, Helen's turn ha and has ended with say one three double zero. And this is how much it's supposed to give twelve thousand five hundred and forty naira. Okay, what the software is doing is that it is uh, going to get the difference between the initial and closing uh, values of the meter and apply the current selling price which you have set the current selling price of whatever product that is here this is pms because pump four pump four is a pms pump if it's an EGO pump is going to pick that uh, uh, current price selling price which you've set for that pump for that uh, product and apply that here to calculate this sum okay so say this is the amount and say for some reason for some reason the money is not exactly what it's supposed to be for some reason you are collecting less of that so you're collecting this you enter what you actually receive the software has a way of you know doing all these checks and balances later on feel free to just enter what you received okay and end the shift now i'm only going to do those two shifts for this demo but then you get the point 
this cash payment is for if you have any expenses on on that particular day in question you can have them all captured here so if you have some logistics that went down let's see um um uh, transport cost for um supply of drinks if there's any such thing <laughs> and the logistic was uh 500 naira okay okay and if you have any other logic any other thing to add say there was office expenses uh photocopying that happens sometimes in let not spell it correctly oh for the copying all right for the copying of uh of uh these document that also not spell that word too whoa all right and that happened with uh 15 air you know, something like that okay those are expenses you captured all right that's all if you go back to the dashboard you now see that you have today's sales combination of all the sales from all the pumps will just be there for you to see as a quick view you still have under reports uh daily report uh for today it's showing you well these are the tanks that participated just these two tanks well for all the tanks you had all of their opening uh, values but these are the only two that had product supplied to them and the day is not over so you have not entered the closing uh, closing values so maybe we should go and, and close it so that the report will be complete the issue with that <laughs> closing now is that i can't uh, off the top of my head calculate how that change will affect the the uh, the report okay let, let me let me attempt to do that let's let's attempt to do that let's uh, look at the report look at the sales and do some maths in our head to guess product sales here yeah, product sold in pms is uh 212 liters 221 which means if we deduct if we go to the um uh, where is that um daily you have dipping Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't enter closing stock. I just, I just remembered. You don't enter closing stock. You only enter opening stock, um, well, opening dipping readings. You don't enter closing. When once it gets to the next day, when you enter the the uh, opening values for the next day, it becomes also the closing of the previous day. So uh, many stations run 24 hour shifts, so 24 hours uh, product supply. So there is no closing. There is always just the opening. The opening of a new day is the closing of the previous day. So that would mean that this report will not be uh, complete until the next days. But then I can explain what will happen. Once, if uh, by the next day, if you're looking at the previous day report, you will then have your closing stock values here reflecting you know, the new days, the success. Uh, well, if, if, you, if you plant that, doesn't work like on Sundays, if there's any such thing. I don't think there's any plant that operates that way. Your closing here will be uh, Saturdays. So if this is a Monday, this will be Saturdays. Uh, Saturdays. Um, sorry, what am I saying? Yeah, sorry, I got, I got a bit lost. Your closing, if you're looking at at your Saturday's record on a Monday, what your opening of the Monday is will become the closing of that Saturday. So that's that's the maths there. All right, what you have now on a uh, product distribution summary, you have uh, last closing stock it is going to be zero because, you know, we started uh, empty and then we so you have zeros there because it's the first day. But of course, sub subsequently, you have what the last closing stock values were or the previous day, the day just before this day, then what your opening stock values are will be here. Then the product uh, purchased this is what you paid for. 
this was what was supplied. Remember, there was a difference in the PMS. We, we paid for uh, 20,000 liters, but we got supplied short of uh, 200 liters. We did that deliberately, just so that you see this disparity. Now, dispensed product uh, was this, because we only dealt with PMS. And sold is this. Now, this number is not actually what you're going to get. Like I told you, the reports that you see are for the days that has passed. This is not yet completed. So after we enter a record for a different day, if we enter a record for the, like the next day, this will calculate your dispense. Now, the dispense value is the, the difference between what was in the tank and uh, what was in the tank before and after uh, your your sales so you have an opening stock value if you have a product supply on that day that number is added to it then on the, at the end of the day well which is actually the very next day's opening becomes the closing of the previous day so it is going to deduct that number and now give you exactly how much product left your tank okay now that number is could be exactly or different from how much that is recorded here as sold products. What you record here as sold products is what you recorded based on your meter change. As you're taking those totalizer readings, those values are your product sales. It's going to accumulate all of that and that becomes your product sales. Now, if there's a difference between what actually left your tank and what uh, you sold, you will see that difference here. For it's actually accumulating all together all the pms together as one all the agos and all the dpk all together as one so these are closing stock values again like i said the same thing applies all right these are for monies uh expected sales is this actual sales is that now the, the difference between this and that is just expected sales is how much based on your selling price would this is this product what that is what this is Actual sales is the money you receive from the sales attendant, which usually should be the same. Okay, but in that case, like what I did, I deliberately uh, short paid myself so that you can have that difference here. So profit from sale, you remember again, it's not the entire money you receive that is a profit. Uh, there is the cost of sale, uh, uh, the, the cost of the sales will be deducted from that, which is the cost of the product cost of the product will be out and that this is what you have left okay so we're applying the profit per liter if you apply the profit per liter on what you sold then you have this and of course you also need to deduct what you lost that is if you made any loss here then you have your profit from the sale here now value of closing stock we will now be looking at what you have in your storage tanks applying the current uh, cost price uh, current selling price rather not cost price current selling price will tell you what the value of what you have uh, buried in your tanks currently where it's a combination of all three of them these are your sales attendants that we on duty on said day this is sales history so it's going to be all the shifts that happened if they have if they, if they have five attendants in this case two attendants and they worked uh, two shifts you have uh, that's double of this so it depends so now you can also see the one that was uh, different. You can see station price and sold price. This is exactly the same for this one, but this is one I, I, I shot paid by 40 Naira. So you can see this is where you have the, the difference. This is profit, which is of course, as you know, I call a profit by each liter uh, based on the current price is calculated here. This is sold volume based on the difference in the totalizer. This is the product that they were, they were selling and then the pumps they worked on. So these are all the expenses on the, 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 the dates that you picked. All the expenses that happened on that day. So you can go back in time and pick any date in the past and just view all of this uh, information. You have a periodic report. Now, periodic report is, is the same it's actually the same as the daily report. The difference is instead of giving you activity for a single day, it gives you activity for a date range. That's just the difference. But everything else is the same. So you're going to see more sales history, more expenses, 
and the numbers here will be much bigger because of the, the length of time. You can pick for a whole month and see. Of course, the opening stock will be the opening stock uh, at the beginning of the month, that's on the first, and then the closing will be uh, the first of the next month. The opening stock will be first of the very next month will be the closing stock to close off all the activities for that month you selected. Then we have still on the report, we have product reconciliation report, which shows, uh, well, of course, for a date range you've selected product at the time you have PMS, AGU, and DPK. For each product, it's going to show, uh, well, of course, saying all values are in liters, so that I don't need to write liters, liters, liters. Well, we know that. So, well, it's going to be a date range, depending on the range of dates you've selected. If you selected for a month, so you see uh, 31 days, perhaps, depending on what month it is. You have a full 31 days here in the right order. If there was products uh, purchased, you see the difference between the what was purchased and the supply. Of course, if there's difference, there'll be a loss, uh, a loss from the supply. Okay, that's uh, a loss from supply. You see the opening stock, which is a combination, a combination of the what was in the tank. Okay, what was in the the tank plus the supply becomes the opening stock. The closing stock we know. Um, they have what was dispensed versus what was sold, and I've explained that before. I've explained the difference before. This is uh, dispensing loss. So like I said, the difference between those two becomes dispensing loss. And then that leak will appear here. Then the total, that's of course, when you have a difference, that becomes a leak and that leak appears here. Then, well, total loss become the combination of the, if there's any uh, loss during the dispensing and the loss during the supply. All of that will be here for that single day for that product. And it goes on to the next and the next. So you have the entire 31 days, one product at a time. So that's the uh, product reconciliation report. Then there is a uh, okay, product supply history. So you select a sales agent in a date range. You see a, a history of the product supplied. So for dates, the agent, how much you paid for, or how much you actually supplied based on your Dipping reading for confirmation, you have the difference here. How much you paid, how much was logistic, what was the unit uh, cost okay, at the time, and then what, what you used as a unit price at that time. I'll we'll show you here. So I can let you travel back in time sometimes to see things that happened in the past. This is your cash book. The cash book uh, is going to show for any date range again that you've selected. It'll show you all your, your debits and credits. Well, you know, as an accountant, you know, your debits are funds that came in, credits and monies you paid out. So you had all of these expenses that we, we paid out. Logi so you paid something on logistics of your expense and so So they're all here as uh, as credits, whereas debits. Um, and of course, part of that debit is a product supply. This uh, 3.5 million naira is product supply. Now, this is uh, what we have as, as, as a debit, which is just the cost of sales, product sales, but not cost of sales. I mean, product sales, the money we receive from the customers are here. And you all understand how all of that is done on the calculations that happen here. It's very clear to accountants. Now we have a, a negative value here because now remember when I was saying in um, when you are here making your initial settings, you should have uh, your opening balance so if you have your opening balance here then you won't have a negative value there because the, the, you have a negative value because the software is assuming that the money that you used to pay for you need money you used to pay for the products you bought you paid from your post and this software is the, the record from what you said here is saying you had no money in your post yet you bought products worth 3.5 million naira so that's the reason for the negative so say you had six million naira here for instance this six million one two three one two three but if you had six million in your post for instance okay which of course you will have some money you know of course you have to have some money otherwise you will not be able to buy products so if you enter the right amount of money there you will now see that uh you, you won't have that you instead have uh your current balance will be 2.3 because you've made some uh, expenses on buying those products. 
and some little expenses here and there of course logistics but then this will be a correct uh, display of what is going on in your business if you have your right balance entered of course it's going to come like with your little head and all that giving you a chance to print and carry all that information it will be useful um, if you have other accounting softwares you are using alongside or if you want to prepare your books for for auditing or uh getting your, your clock uh, tax clearance okay all right so this is profit and loss statement for well, again a date range you've selected here it's going to show uh sales revenue all the money that you've received from sales is here cost of sales um cost of sales are um the actual cost of the product you're selling so this becomes the the gross profit but then you need to apply all the expenses that happened within that period let's let's go ahead and put oh this date range is uh of this month i think okay this is january and this is december okay that's correct okay so it's going to carry all your expenses here and then calculate your net profit down there and then this is a report that could be useful yeah that's all the reports we have on the list okay so i hope this was very informative and i hope uh, you find it useful feel free to contact us if you wish to have this set up for your plant and uh, we'll be glad to come in. Thank you very much.